Hello and thanks for watching. This is my next Linux video because I'm getting some good feedback on my Linux videos and why not keep it up? A lot of good um, input from people, you know, suggestions on what to try because the Linux community is known for being pretty helpful. And a lot of people are, you know, smart individuals that use Linux. They tend to be pretty computer savvy and it, wow, you just learn a lot from people. And so I am now going to try Garuda Linux. And I don't know much at all about this Linux dis distribution other than it's based on Arch, just like a few others out there are like Storm OS and which I've never tried, and I'll actually give that a try soon. But right now I'm remoted into the laptop I have next to me because it's bigger on screen and I can look right up at the screen to monitor my audio levels. So that's my reason for doing this. I could record it right on the laptop, but I figure this is a little more productive. And so you can see that I've now logged in. And the only thing I've done after installing Garuda Linux was I went right to the app store that was right down here. It's called, what is it called? It's called Octopi which is package manager, but I installed no machine so that I could remote in from my desktop. So now I can just control this desktop and, you know, it's right in front of me. So if there's something I couldn't do remotely, I can just grab the touchpad and move that as well, which you can see I can do that. But um, let's, let's check this out and just explore this as a new user. Is this something you want to try as a distro hopper or whatever you want to, you know, something new? You just want to give it a shot? So at first glance, if you look up here at the top left, you see what appears to be, yep, it's a menu button. And then to the right of it is the text, I think, that applies to this menu button. It kind of reminds me of Linux Mint, where you can kind of customize part of the start button, if you will. But if I click this, it doesn't appear to do anything. Let's click the button to the left. Oh, there it is. So it's just at the top, kind of like old, you know, classic GNOME in a way. But this is pretty sweet. Uh, I mean first glance, I mean, you'll probably notice these icons, they're amazing. Like this color scheme is just, this is tasteful. I could never design something like this. This is, the theming's already done for me. If somebody wants to be wowed by my desktop, it's already done. This looks really cool. So that's kind of cool. You can just look up here and just kind of browse through the applications. I immediately noticed that there's no office suite, which I'm happy because there's so many options out there. I feel like, yeah, LibreOffice is probably the one to go with maybe, it's not based on Electron like other Office apps might be. And that's cool. I, I'm cool with it not including the Office suite. Yes, I'm used to most Linux distributions coming with something, but this is this is cool. Let's check what other tools it's got. So development, you got Kate, text, a bunch of text editors. Wow, at least a couple. Um, console, Qt Designer, not anything I'm going to do anytime soon. So just under graphics, I immediately noticed there's just Ocular, which, okay, it's a great document viewer, but I don't see GIMP. But um, let's see how easy it is. We'll, we'll remember where I left off here under graphics. Let's go over to the Octopi icon and search for GIMP. So if I click on GIMP, click install, talks about the dependencies that are optional. Let's try not checking any of them and just clicking OK and click the check mark. And then go to Yes. Type my password and hit the OK button. And holy cow, that installed very quickly. Is it done? Let's go check. Oh my God. Yeah, there it is. So let's click it and launch it. And this is on a six-year-old laptop. Impressive. Very, very fast uh, first launch. And let's try it one more time just to go from close to open this time now that it's launched for the first time. Very cool. I'm impressed. That was a very fast install. Much faster than what you'll get with Fedora. And uh, that's maybe a review I have coming too, because I would like to check out the latest Fedora that's not beta now. So let's um, close this and go back to the menu up here. Application launcher, if you will. Got to get these terms right. And then under internet, so you already know we got the graphics, right? We got Now we're going to go to internet, and we got Fire Dragon, which I'm not sure if that's a fork of Firefox of any kind. I, I know there's a couple forks of Firefox out there, but let's check out Fire Dragon. Okay, I skipped ahead and searched it for you. Now, this is really interesting as well. It uses an instance of SearchX, or Search, S-E-A-R-X, which is like a self-hosted, non-privacy-invading browser. I, apparently, our search engine, it's, a, it's apparently amazing. Anyways, here it is. It's a fork of LibreWolf. LibreWolf. So that's what it is. I, I wasn't sure. So it's just another fork, but kind of cool to see there's other options out there. You always got to have something as a backup, right? All right, I closed LibreWolf. Back to the menu. Let's go back here to Internet. You got KDE Connect. I heard that's been improved lately and offers a lot more flexibility with the iPhone. 
I haven't tried it yet. I do have an iPhone. I do prefer Android, but I have iPhone for family reasons. <laughs> and um, I heard it's really it's really improved. It's it's impressive. KDE Connect. So um, I don't know. Check that out if you're interested. No machine. That's something I installed. You will not get that with a stock install. Although I did find it right in Octopi without adding any additional sources or anything. I searched for it, it installed, and it worked out of the box. I can't say that for every Linux distribution. I've had issues with it in the past where the port just kept closing, but it worked out of the box in Octopi. I think it was Manjaro. I had to uh, tinker with it for a while before I finally was able to get it to work. But this also being an Arch distro, it worked right away. Multimedia. So you got James DSP. I've heard of this, have never used it. Let's check it out. I think it's something that maybe is in the chain of your audio that can allow you to do some effects. Yeah, so I don't know if it uses jack or how it ties into your sound, but this is interesting to me as an audio person. But dynamic bass boost, very cool. I tend to keep everything flat because I just like to have a good set of hardware that just puts out good sound, and I don't want to alter what somebody else has already done that knows more than I do. You know what I mean? I just kind of keep the sound going the way it's designed. But if you need to, you got some, you know, maybe headphones that don't sound great to you and you want to tweak them a little bit, you can apparently do that. Sound positioning. Cro- wow, this is really, it's got reverb. And everything. <laughs> I, I guess I haven't ever tried this. I have heard of it, but I, I apparently I've never seen this. And this is pretty interesting to put in the in- distribution right out of the box. So back to multimedia, we have MPV media player. We have... My mouse that can't stay still. There it goes. Test utility. Allow testing video for Linux devices. I've never done that. Viewer for video capture. Hmm. Does that mean video capture as in like encoder? So my laptop, you can see <laughs> pointing down it. So the webcam works out of the box on this Linux. I mean, man, I'm just being impressed over and over again. I um. So you can see it's pointing down. Like I said, I'm remoted into the laptop, so I'm not looking directly at the screen, but I have the screen angled down so I can see my main screen. And the webcam works perfectly. You can see my crazy mouse pad. Um, so a simple GUI for installing, selecting, and manipulating Quantum themes. I don't know what this is. So I'm not that advanced, apparently. I don't know what a lot of this stuff does, but I have to really tinker with this. I still think this is so far a good Linux distribution if you don't have time to com- compile your own kernel, maybe. Maybe you just want to run Arch. And I think this is a good way to do that. There's quite a few others out there. Like I said, Manjaro is one. And a lot of people say that the Manjaro th- uh, community might be a little snobbish. I, I haven't come across that. I've, I've asked questions. Under system, wow, there's a lot. Um, well, first, let's see what YAD is. Simple GUI for editing YAD settings. Is that like YAML? No. I don't know what this is. Okay, wow. Lots of tools here. Under system, we got Alacrity. Alacrity. I, I thought we already had one called console down here, so let's see what the difference is. Let's open up this Alacrity. Wow, that's big and pretty. Um, this is interesting. So now if we go back here and go back to, let's go check out console. It is different, I bet. Yeah. Oh, no, this is fish. Yeah, this is a fish right here. This one's fish console. I like that it includes that out of the box. That is so cool. Let's go back to system or system and let's click that one more time. Yeah, it didn't say it is not fish. So that is interesting. Very cool. You can browse your network. This, there's lots of advanced tools here. You got Dolphin as the default file manager. And you see those beautiful icons here. Wow, those pop. It looks really cool. This looks slick, man. Come on. Fish, Garuda Assistant. I mean, this is there's so much. And this is what I think is on the menu bar down here. Garuda. No, it's Garuda Welcome. So this is Garuda Assistant. <laughs> this is incredible. So you can just reset the configs on all these different programs, which they've done a lot of stuff for us. I don't have to do any of this. This is really cool. I'd have to spend a lot more time with this to do a review this is not this is more of like a first look so maybe i'll title the video that let's look at the gruda welcome okay so and even the eye candy right out of the box with the animations and this is just on an intel graphics chip no nvidia or acceleration here but we'll go back to that let's go back to system so i don't miss anything garuda gamer oh my oh my this is cool wow you can install steam right here 
Don't have to go into, you know, package manager or download any flat packs. I can just check the box and install it. Lutris, this is so awesome. Holy moly. I'll have to mess with this too. I'm going to be playing some games, I think. Um, on my Intel-based chipset, that's not going to be that powerful. Uh, let's go to boot options. Let's see that. It's going to ask for password. Cool, cool. Wow. Don't want to mess with that right now. Let's go to system. Garuda Network Assistant. I want to check out this. Let's see. Oh, cool. It's almost like what you'd have up here, but in a window. So I just, I have to blank that out. My external IP address. I'm doing some hosted services. I need to blank that out. That would not be cool to show that to the world. Windows drivers. NDIS wrapper. That's been around for a long time. I think at least 50, 15 years. Um, okay, cool. Let's check this out. Um, Garuda Network Assistant, System Maintenance Settings. Check that out. So it's kind of like, almost like a Mac OS type thing. Just a few selections for your updates. You know, tell me about my updates. Kind of reminds me of Mac OS in some ways. Wow, there's so much. And there's the Garuda Welcome icon that we saw and that I launched earlier. Let's just skip through a few of these. Console, we already know we, we have that. Pace, don't know what that is. Let's click it. Okay, so you can just change repositories, you know, disable them, toggle them. Let's go back. Wi-Fi hotspot. Don't have to worry about that. System monitor. Let's check out the system monitor. Is it top or what is it? Oh, that is pretty. Is this a custom version of Stacer? I don't know. Let's see. About system monitor. Gosh, it looks really nice. I mean, it's its own thing, apparently. I thought it was Stacer, maybe like a custom version of it, but this... Wow, this is this looks really good. You can see I got 16 gigs of RAM in this laptop. Interesting. Very cool. Applications. I mean, the resources aren't... I mean, I'm using quite a bit of RAM already. I'm not recording on this laptop. I am remoted into it. I'm not sure what the usage would go down to if I wasn't remote into it, but that's a considerable amount of RAM being used for what I'm doing. Uh, processes, and there you go. You can see what's, let's see what's eating up. Latte doc, wow, 234 megs. That seems like a lot. Latte. <laughs> Just put a fart sound effect in there. You know, there's, oh, there's some RAM usage going on here, but the eye candy d does come at a cost, I have to say. So, what do I think so far? I think this is beautiful. I think it's great. I like to use it you know, for a couple days and just see how watching YouTube videos goes, you know, watching Odyssey videos, what the RAM usage jumps up to. I mean, I'm already using two and a half gigs. Not a big concern because I have 16 on this machine, but what if you had four or eight? You, you, that's quite a bit of RAM. So that's something I would, I would look out for um, and just keep an eye on. But let's look at the Garuda Welcome because this is really nice to have. And I didn't have this launched because I closed it and kept the computer on all day. So it didn't launch in a natural way that you would normally see it. But when you log into Garuda, you're going to see this Garuda welcome screen. And you've already seen Garuda Assistant, Garuda Gamer. We saw that. The settings Manager. They really brand things very well. And, wow, that's really nice. Let's go to Quit. Does it take us back? Yes, it does. Garuda Boot Options. There's that password prompt, which you should have for boot options. Yep. Go over to Close. This is slick. Let's go to System Cleaner. See what kind of cache it cleans up. Uh, so it says, looking for conflicting packages. Total downloads. Okay, let's go to yes. Oh, it's Stacer. Wait, so we're at Stacer now as the cleaning utility, but it could not be the task monitor. It could not. So, interesting. Let's close Stacer. And we're going to go back to Garuda Welcome. That is that is interesting to me. It seems like Stacer could just maybe take the task away from the uh, system monitor on there, but that's just my opinion. I don't know as much as the guys that wrote this. So uh, BTRF Assistant, let's check that out. Volume selection. Okay. Internal final system statistics. Oh, this is cool. I mean, this is a lot more information that I generally care to read about, even on, you know, X, you know, EXT4 or whatever. I just, I, 
this is really cool. Um, wow. Okay. Cool. I'll look at that later. Chaotic R. What the heck? Automated building repo for Arch user repository packages. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, private bit. What is it? It has Bitwarden? Is that installed? No way. Okay, it's not. I, I host Bitwarden on my own server, but that's really interesting that they have links to these. So these are just basically web icons, I guess. Um, like even Discord. Let's try it. It's going to open a browser, I'm guessing. Yeah, so more eye candy, more icons that just take you to a website. Okay, that's cool. At least it's not taking up space on the system. Let's close this and go back. Okay, wiki. Let's see how good their wiki is. I know the Arch wiki is amazing, but... Let's see. Wow, even their wiki's got some eye, it's eye candy to me. This has got, got some images. It looks nice. Installation. This is real. Wow. These guys took a lot of time, and I appreciate the work they've put into this. Uh, so let's go back again one more time. i just see what else I missed. Uh, donate. Okay, that's cool. Private bin. I think, yeah, these are just services that maybe they're hosting their own Bitwater. Let's, let's go to private bin and check it out. It's going to open a site. Yeah, it's it's dot it's a subdomain of GarudaLinux.org. Very cool. So I don't I can't say I'm going to use this, but that's cool. Burn after reading. Very cool. It's like a little paste bin that you can just you know nuke, I guess, when you're done. Well, that's all I have for today. I you know don't want to waste too much of your time on this, but I want to show you what I see in my first time using this. I think it's I clearly have a lot to learn about Garuda. I'm not familiar with it at all, but I think it's really cool and interesting. So thanks for watching.